welcome back to my channel online microbiology and in today's video we are going to discuss about the classification of animals or kingdom animalia so what is the importance of a classification means as we can see there are more number of animals such as millions of animals we cannot study the characteristics of each and every animal so based on the similarities animals containing a same features and same uh, similarities are grouped together and are classified uh, based on that based on their characteristics so as you can see based up, based upon the cellular organization the kingdom animalia is further classified uh, into two types such as a cellular level and tissue organ or organ system means as we can see in cellular level the cells are not organized to form a tissues rather the cells are uh, arranged loosely so it is called as a cellular level and tissues organs and organ systems means groups of cells containing similar functions are grouped into tissues group of tissues is called organs and the group of organs together form organ system so based on the cellular le level it is a uh, it is divided into porifera and based on the tissue organ or organ system and again it is further classified into based on symmetry which is a radial or a bilateral symmetry so it is a uh, divided into cilentrata and tenophora and based on the bilateral symmetry it is further classified into platyhelminthes ascii helminthes enidata arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and uh, chordata so what is meant by radial and bilateral symmetry means if uh, we divide uh, if we divide the organ or animal into two halves so in only one plane it can be divided into two halves means it is bilateral symmetry so if an uh, organism can be divided into two equal halves in any plane so that uh, organism or symmetry is called radial symmetry and uh, we can see the animals contain a body cavity if uh, they if the animals do not contain body cavity they are called acelomates if a false coelom is present they are called pseudo coelomates and if true coelom is present coelomates so now we can discuss about the basis of classification means based on which characteristics the animals are classified means first one we can see arrangement of coelom means cells are arranged in a two embryonic layers external ectoderm and internal endoderm are called diploblastic means if the if the cells in animals are arranged in a two embryonic layers so the embryonic layers are called external ectoderm and the internal endoderm so if two embryonic layers are is present they are called diploblastic animals if mesoderm is present between the ectoderm and the endoderm they are called triploblastic animals and second one is body symmetry so as i uh, said before if or if an organism is divided into two equal halves in any plane it is called a ba uh, radial symmetry and if an organism can divide into two equal halves in one plane means it is called a bilateral symmetry so based on the symmetry the animals are classified into symmetry and asymmetry and a symmetry is a radial and a bilateral so for example for uh, radial symmetry let us take a, a circle so if we if we cut the circle in one plane it is divided into two halves and in another plane it can be divided into two halves so it is called radial symmetry for example if we take a triangle it can be divided into two halves only in one symmetry so it this is called bilateral symmetry and the and the fourth one is a natural nature of coelom means the seal what is coelom means the body cavity which is lined by mesoderm so as we can see so this is called as ectoderm and the internal layer is called endoderm and the middle layer is called a mesoderm so the body cavity means the central cavity is called body cavity and the body cavity which is lined by a mesoderm is called a coelom and the fifth one is patterns of digestive circulatory or reproductive systems means uh, what uh, what the organs are present for digestive system and circulatory system and the reproductive system so let us study each uh, in detail so to understand about the phylum porifera so the phylum porifera is also called as a porifera pore bearers and this phylum includes uh, the commonly called uh, sponges and these are uh, organisms are aquatic means they live in water and invertebrates and they comprises of sponges 
and the body is not differentiated into tissues as i said before these uh, these uh, exhibit a cellular level of organization and the cells uh, do not differentiated into tissues and the, here the spongocil is present in their body and the osculum means a single opening is present at the top of the body and the single opening is useful for the exit of water and the canal system contains so ostia and canals water circulation is seen in the body and it is further classified into calcarea hexactinellia and demospongia and the examples are spongilla which is a nothing but fresh water sponge and euspongia bath sponge sicon and a scypha so let us first next understand about the next phylum which is a phylum coelenterata or a nidaria these are called a sac like animals hence they are called coelenterates so these are the diploblastic means they contain outer ectoderm and inner endoderm and these are multicellular means different types of cellulars are present and the tissue grade of organization means cells together combine to form tissues and the digestion takes place in the coelenteron it it opens by mouth at one end and they contains a tentacles at the mouth opening so the tentacles are called nematocysts so these are what is the use of this tentacles means they are useful in offense and defense food capture and adhesion and these con and uh, these do not contain respiratory system circulatory system and uh, excretory organs and the examples are hydra obelia aurelia which is the scientific name of jellyfish and uh, penulata which is a sea pen corallium is called red coral physalis is commonly called as portuguese man of war and a metridium which is an a sea anemone and it is further classified into class hydrozoa scyphozoa and anthozoa and the next phylum is a phylum platyhelminthes so this phylum includes a flat forms and a, as we can see they are a soft bodies and they show bilateral symmetry means they can divided into two halves in only one plane and these are the triploblastic animals means they contain outer ectoderm inner endoderm and the middle mesoderm and they can and they are acelomates means coelom is absent and they show organ level of organization and they contain so hooks and suckers in the parasitic forms means these hooks and suckers are useful for the adhesion to the host and uh, the flame cells are present for the excretion as we can see in the phylum coelenterata they do not contain excretory organs but phylum platyhelminthes members contains flame cells for excretion and this can and this can includes a incomplete digestive system and the circulatory respiratory systems are absent and the examples are uh, the gasea and the fasciola liver fluke tinea solium which is called as a pork tape form and it is further classified into turbellaria trematoda and cystoda and the turbellaria includes muller's larva and the cystoda includes cysticeria's larva so this is about the phylum platyhelminthes so let us discuss about the another phylum which is a phylum tenophora so these are commonly known as a sea walnuts comb jellies or a sea gooseberries and we can see this show radial symmetry and the diploblastic animals and the tissue level of organization and these contains glue cells for food capture so these exhibit a bioluminescence and the, the larval form is called cidipid larva and it further classified into tentaculata and nuda so examples of tentaculata are pleurobrachia and tenophora examples of nuda are beroi so this is about the phylum tenophora so let us understand about the next phylum which is a phylum askihelminthes or which is also called phylum nematoda so this includes a round round forms and the body of a nematode is a circular in cross section these are free living or parasitic parasitic forms means they live on other living organisms and cause diseases and the body symmetry is a bilaterally symmetric and triploblastic animals and this contain a pseudocoelomates means a false coelom is present and this contain rhinitic glands for excretion and the sense organs are called amphits and the phasmids and the digestive system contains mouth pharynx and anus and the examples are ascaris which is a common round worm and vocaria filarial worm and is further classified into class ephasmidia and the class of phasmidia so this is about the phylum askihelminthes 
so here next phylum is a phylum in elida so these are container segmented body plan so the examples are earthworms and the leeches so earthworms and leeches comes under the phylum in elida and the body is elongated shows bilateral symmetry triploblastic and the body is divided by transverse septa into segments or metaverse so as we can see the body of a earthworm is different is separated into differentiate into different segments they contain a closed circulatory system and also they also contain hemoglobin and the larva form is called trochophore larva and it is further classified into polychaeta oligochaeta and hyrodinia so the polychaeta includes a neris which is a sandworm and the oligochaeta includes a ferritima which is earthworm and hyrodinia includes a hyrodinaria pontobdella and hemidopsis so this is about the phylum in elida so let us discuss about the another phylum which is a phylum arthropoda so these contains a segmented body and the legs are jointed so this class includes insects spiders and crustaceans and this also kind so includes a large number of species so the body is bilaterally segmented triploblastic and the body is segmented and the body contains a head thorax and the abdomen so head and thorax fuse to form a cephalothorax and the body cavity is a hemocell which is which is filled with the blood and this contain open circulatory system and the excretory organs are green glands and the coxal glands examples are limulus which is the king crab so the point to remember is a king crab is called as a living fossil and the arania which is a scientific name of spider cancer which is a scientific name of crab and the prairie planeta which is a cockroach so it is further classified into trilobita chelicerata manibulata and insecta so this is about the phylum arthropoda so let us first uh, discuss about the phylum mollusca so it is a second largest phylum it includes a uh, seven classes and the and uh, the bodies are a uh, soft triploblastic bilaterally symmetrical and the coelomates these contains a uh, gills or pulmonary chambers and the respiration takes place by hemocyanin which is a copper containing pigment and this contains a uh, kidneys as a excretory organs and the examples are octopus devil fish doris sea lemon and the pila which is a scientific name of uh, apple snail so this is a uh, the phylum mollusca and the phylum echinodermata so this class includes a uh, starfishes sea urchins brittle stars and the uh, sea cucumbers and the body is a uh, radial symmetry and the uh, uh, skeleton is a calcareous and these are the triploblastic coelomate and the water vascular system and the food capturing uh, and the uh, locomotion is present in these uh, animals and these are a uh, sexually dimorphic means male and female uh, animals are present and the fertilization is external and the regeneration is a uh, well developed and the examples are of your tricks spiny brittle stars echinus uh, sea urchin it is further classified into palmetozoa and uh, elethrozoa so our next phylum is a uh, phylum hemichordata so hemi means half uh, and chordata means a uh, chordate so this is called as a uh, half chordate and these are the bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic coelomates and the uh, proboscis collar and the uh, trunk is present and the circulatory system is open type so proboscis is used as a excretory organ and the larval form is called tornaria larva so examples are balanoglossus and rhabdopleura so this class is further classified into entronusta and tyrobrachia so this is about the phylum hemichordata so next phylum is a phylum chordata so it is a large phylum of animals they are distinguished by the presence of a notochord so it is uh, divided into further classes so class pisces these are the poikilodermic and aquatic animals skin is uh, moist and scaly respiration takes place when the, by the gills and the locomotion takes place by the fins and the heart is a uh, two chambered so this class includes a uh, fishes a uh, dog fishes which is nothing but shark a catfish and a uh, seahorse so this is about the class uh, pisces so next class is uh, amphibians so they are uh, semi aquatic means so half of their life they spend on the water and the remaining half they spend on the land so these are the cold blooded and these are oviparous means they gives rise to eggs and not uh, egg ones 
so the skin is a soft moist and glandular and the respiration takes place by lungs and trunk a trunk is a protrusible means uh, they extend their uh, tongue and the heart is a three chambered and the larval form is called a tadpole examples are proteus frog etc and the next class is a class of reptilia these are the terrestrial creeping or burrowing and the carnivorous animals and their skin is dry the expression takes place by the lungs heart is three chambered and do not contain larval stages examples are tortoise turtle snake and a crocodile and a alligator and our last uh, two classes are the uh, class aves and class uh, mammalia so class aves are uh, oviparous warm bladed and uh, bipedal flying and the feathers is seen in their body four limbs are modified as uh, wings they do not contain a teeth uh, instead uh, they contain a beak and the heart is a uh, four chambered examples are corvus which is a scientific name of crow a kiwi and a peacock and the final class is a class mammalia these are the terrestrial viviparous vertebrates and the hair is seen in their body and the skin uh, contain a sweat and a species and the skin contains a sweat and sebaceous glands and the females contain a mammary glands and the diaphragm is present between the abdomen and the thoracic cavity and this contains a lungs for the respiration and the heart is a four chambered so it is further classified into subclasses prototheria metatheria and eutheria so the prototheria contains primitive reptiles and egg laying mammals examples include a platypus and the metatheria contains a pouched animals a pouch is called marsupium so as you can see in kangaroo kangaroo contains a pouch so that pouch is called marsupium so in those animals the young born is young new, newly born is immature and stays in the pouch of the mother and the example as kangaroo and the eutheria these are the higher viviparous uh, placental animals means they contain plazilla so examples are cat human rat bat and whales so this is an overall uh, classification of uh, animalia so we need to understand the different uh, differences between uh, different phylums and what is a specific special character in uh, each phylum and also you need to learn uh, those examples and there are uh, scientific names so if you have any doubts please do comment in the comment box and do subscribe my channel thanks for watching